I haven't had a single comment so far of somebody saying I remember Sonic Underground. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, we might we might be the only ones. Where are those Sonic Underground fans hiding? What do you call it? What do you call a Sonic Underground fan and a Sonic Undergrounder? Oh, a, a mole person? <laughs> a fucking freak? <laughs> All of the above? Yeah. When in doubt, pick all of them. Undergrounder. Yeah. I'm a Sonic Undergrounder. <laughs> it's way past cool. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Oh, Remember? boy. It's your body. No one has the right to touch it's you. It's not even the same to. show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was better. Yeah, it was. It was terrible, and it was still better. Everybody serves by sad AM, though. Everybody what? Sorry. Uh, stupid, stupid. Uh, see, that only makes sense to people who have who know all the names of the Sonic shows. The Saturday mm -hmm. AM. Sat AM is the nickname given to the, the time slot that was given to the other Sonic the Hedgehog show. The one with Sally the Hedgehog? Was she the one that, like, wore a vest? I think she did. All I know is it's the one that, like, every furry from our generation be realized they were a furry because of. Oof. And then See, the next like... generation after all became furries because of Rouge the Bat. So there you go. Thanks, Sonic. <laughs> See, when I was a kid, I think I watched both, like, Sad Am and the, um... And the stupid one. Yeah, and like I couldn't <laughs> tell the difference. You thought they were the same show, just the different episodes like had different continuities yeah. or what? Yeah, because like I was a little kid watching this like before school in the morning. And Are I'm you fucking like, 30? You couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> yeah. I How mean, old I were you by then? I wasn't 30 then. <laughs> <laughs> That's the twist, everybody. Truth's a time traveler. I've always been 30. Yeah. No, it's like I mean, forever like... 21. No, you're forever 30. What an odd age to pick. I mean, it's kind of like with Reboot, how like in the first season, it was just like a random like computer joke show. And then like in the second season or whatever, it became this like, dark edgy plot driven yeah thing. they s suddenly they're like wait we could do something serious with this i thought it was maybe the same thing with sonic that like after oh. after it was on for a while they like took it super seriously and stopped making like joke episodes i just like that the idea of that being child truth's rationale too is perhaps the perhaps the creators of the show were inspired by reboot yes <laughs> No, I mean, that's just to explain, like, how I was able to confuse them. You said stroking your 30-year-old beard? <laughs> the beard I've had for 30 years. Yeah. For all 30 years of your 30 years of life. All right, we've oh. got a good stockpile of blue science, so at least that won't be eating stuff up for a while. Mm. A lot of resources being carried to me right now. Mm. I'm almost at 100 processing units, although... That's half of what we need, but processing okay. unit production is speeding up. Mm -hmm. Which is good, because we need that to speed up. Okay, every kind of research but gold is now fully stockpiled, so the resources are going to yep. get eaten up less along those production lines, which is good. Mm -hmm. Also, the electricity will get eaten up less. Yeah. We're going to have a lot of time to talk about Sonic here. Oh, so much Sonic time. Oh, man. I like never talk about Sonic with good, anybody. good, good. And then like when I do Factorio videos, I'm talking about Sonic like yeah. every single session. Yeah. Especially Sonic Underground, the shittiest one. I mean, I never talk about wrestling, but on this I talk about. I always talk about wrestling every opportunity <laughs> yeah, I get. I on. fucking love wrestling. I get it's real. Fucking awesome. R -r 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 wrestling. Yeah, I could teach you so much about wrestling right now. So much about wrestling. I don't even know where to start. One of these days, you're going to watch a wrestling show with me, and we're going to play wrestling games together over Parsec, and it's going to be awesome. For only $9.99. Only $9.99.
Except for you get to do it for free, because Parsec doesn't cost you money. Oh, uh, because yeah. you're on the network. Yeah. Well, that too. That has nothing to do with Parsec, though. <laughs> but, yeah, the the network is nine ninety nine. just in case anyone was wondering. So, oh, okay. we have a... Ah, oh, the turret finally died. Okay. Turret ran out of ammo. was just being wailed on for a really long time. Oh, where? Uh, copper mine. But, but it's, it's, good now. it's... It'll be fine. It's just every time, you know, they'll attack an empty turf for a little while, they'll destroy it, and then they'll go fight turrets with ammo. Yeah, it's gonna need some ammo. Yeah. One of these days, we're gonna set up an elaborate train line that just goes between every mine so that you can quickly <laughs> resupply them all. God, if we were using laser turrets, you know you'd never need to resupply a single turret. That's true. Wouldn't that be incredible? You're going to feel that like you're playing something. on easy mode if you play this again and do laser turrets, because laser turrets are <laughs> so fucking good. Um, I wanted a flamethrower a while back. Whatever happened to that? We didn't bother because we never needed them, and it would just be eating up more resources that we could use in other places. I mean, who really needs a flamethrower? Yeah, that's that's... A fair question. The answer is probably nobody. But yeah. who wants a flamethrower? The answer is probably everybody. Right. Fuck's sake. That's a hell of an attack. Oh, a lot mean, of turrets running out of ammo. I'm going over there. I mean, if you're like Kurt Russell in Antarctica, then you kind of need one. Mac wants a flamethrower. Mac wants a what? <laughs> I love the thing. That's a very good movie. Yeah. Man, have you ever just deep dived on the Wikia, seeing all the theories on like people trying to figure out when people got killed off and when it was the thing and when it wasn't? No. Oh man, go on the Wiki and like people have really deep dived into trying to figure out the little eccentricities showing like, okay, was Palmer the thing at this point? Was he not? Like when did he get taken? And there's some good fucking theories. I don't know how much I care about most of that stuff. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fascinating. Um, there's uh, I don't want to spoil the movie, but I want to say one theory about the ending. But I don't want to spoil the movie for people. All right, I won't say. I mean, yeah, I've heard. There, this there's stuff. some good theories. There are good theories. There was something like, oh, somebody had an earring on, so he couldn't be the thing. Oh no, that's thing. stupid new thing movie shit. Yeah, ignore yeah. that. That's stupid. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like the new thing movie completely didn't understand what the fuck the thing was about, and it was really, really shit. It was, uh, so it was just dumb. show the monster all the time as much as we can instead of you know yeah. like it's that's not what the thing was about at all. It just, it just pops out and kills everybody whenever it feels like it. An amazing thing about the original thing though is uh, my friend Malaria. She does like YouTube and Twitch and stuff, and she's really big into horror games. Like she's one hundred percent of the achievements on like. I think 12 Resident Evil games. It's crazy. Oh, I thought you were going to say on the Thing video game. <laughs> yeah, that that game was pretty cool, but rough around the edges. I think it was before achievements, though. I think it Yeah, was that was, I want to say like 2003, 2005, something like that. That was a cool game, though. Mm -hmm. uh, it mm -hmm. didn't understand the Thing either. It thought the Thing was an infection. It wasn't, um, mm. which is crazy because that game is canon. According oh. to the 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 film film studio, that game is the con is canon. So yes, even though it is literally impossible, <laughs> Kurt Russell apparently lives at the end of the thing because he's he has a cameo in the video game. Uh. Even though it is literally impossible and kind of thematically breaks the thing, it's kind of assumed Kurt Russell dies at the end. You know, it's supposed yeah. to be a bittersweet ending, but no, he's he's okay. He somehow got away in a helicopter that didn't exist. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, he got away in a helicopter, and then he comes comes back and saves the main character from the video game at the end. And he they gives you a rocket a... launcher, too. I don't know why he had that. <laughs> they must have had a spare helicopter. You basically. Know, not the one that got broken. Basically, the developers were like, I like the end of Resident Evil, where every Resident Evil game ends with a guy in a helicopter giving you a rocket launcher. So let's do that with <laughs> Kurt Russell. <laughs> He's fucking dead. <laughs> Where'd he get mean, a rocket? Mac wants a rocket launcher. Mac wants a what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least a flamethrower. Yeah, you would have you would have a gas flamethrower at, at Antarctic Research Base because you need to thaw pipes. 
It's not that a fucking liquid sense. flamethrower. It's a gas flamethrower. It's basically a big blowtorch to it warm pipes. Least, it's reasonably practical. Yeah, it wasn't a assume. military flamethrower. It was essentially a giant blowtorch. Like, you would have one of those. It made sense that they had one on base. It's not like they're all pulling guns on, on each other. Like, fucking one dude had a gun, I think. Like, Wilfred Brimley had a revolver. And that's just because he's old, and he probably had one because he's old. Yeah. And the movie was in the 80s, and old people back then had revolvers, I guess. <laughs> he and, got it from his daddy in the Civil War. There you go. Um, but, uh... What was I... I was going somewhere with this The Thing rant. Um, I don't know. Uh, the, oh, Malaria, <laughs> she's Norwegian. Okay. And uh, you know how with the thing, they visit the Norwegian research base, which is nearby, and they find it's like all destroyed and it's like a mystery of what happened. Oh, yeah. At the very beginning of the movie, you watch a Norwegian helicopter and there's Norwegian intercoms and they're like chasing and shooting at a dog. And you, you don't find yeah. out why until like halfway through the movie. Why? Yeah. All you know is something's something's clearly wrong with the dog and the dog gets taken yeah. by the Americans who don't know. Mm -hmm. um they're actually speaking in norwegian and saying the plot of the movie and so yeah. when she watched the movie in norway when they aired the movie they put norwegian subtitles but they didn't dub over the norwegian in like another language they didn't say like oh it's finnish research page and just um and like <laughs> dub it over in another language they left it unsubtitled yeah. just in norwegian so it, it immediately if you're in norway and you watch the movie it immediately spoils the whole plot of the movie because yeah. they're they're just saying literally like that thing is an alien that we dug up we need to kill it before it gets to the american research base and spreads farther yeah i mean i don't know if that spoils the whole movie yeah cause... yeah it doesn't ruin the movie because you only because yeah. you realize something's wrong with the dog immediately you just don't know what's up until like you get a clue as to what's up at the norwegian base and really you don't know seriously what's up until 20 25 minutes in yeah, you find out pretty quickly what's going on with the dog. Yeah, it's not like you would think the dog is innocent up until that point. You yeah. might think well, that maybe, like, the Norwegians are evil or that, like, something happened yeah. that made the Norwegians infected if you know there's an alien thing, but you quickly realize the dog is the problem. I was going to say it could also look at the beginning like the one guy just, I don't know, got cabin fever and like went nuts and killed everybody at the Norwegian place. Yeah, I guess. And he was trying to kill the dog also because he lost his mind. All right. I can actually make the uh, thing now. The thing. The like thing? The movie. Oh, my God. That's how that's how we started bringing it up, didn't we? Now All we right. can actually make the thing. All right. I'm making a, a rocket silo in my hands right now while I sprint. <laughs> Is All that right. how you're going to escape Antarctica? Yes. All right. Are you ready for this shit? Yeah. Halfway done it. All right. Stand over by me. Wow. They just delivered a lot of stuff to me. <laughs> oh, they're delivering concrete. concrete. Okay. It's almost done. Okay. Here we go. Will that line up properly? Mm. Yes. There we go. It's made it in my pocket. There, give it electricity, and you can see if you click on it, it is using all the things we're, we've been making to produce uh, our rocket ship parts. So every single uh, ship... Oh, it needs 10 of each for each one. Right. I'm an idiot. So oh, 10 man. times 100 is 1,000. We need 1,000 of each one of these things, and that will make a rocket. Oh, boy. We can put speed modules and shit like that in it, but... I don't think it would actually help us in any way. Hmm. Uh, can we do efficiency modules in this? I don't even know. I could get behind that. I'm going to try productivity module. I'm just going to make one by hand and put it in and just see if it even works. Because if it does, then we fucking want them in there. Mm -hmm. Because that would mean less resources. So yeah. I'm not requesting any processing units anymore. I hope you're not either. Just make sure that they no. all end up going to this rocket machine. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Productivity modules work in this. Sweet. Okay. I think I will well. start requesting processing units then. Uh, but will that be a net gain? I don't know. Um, you get 10% productivity off a of level three one. So we could get a grand total of 40%. And that what would about? be at the cost of... What is 30 times four? 
Um, 120? 120. 120 processing units to make it so that we need 10% less ingredients total in this. Is that a net gain? I'm not sure. Well, I don't think so, because 10% of what we need is 100, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to use level 1 uh, productivity modules then, because that doesn't use a single... Um, a single ingredient that it needs to make the rocket in the first place. Okay. Well, I'd be making, I mean, if I, if I did four productivity mo modules, it'd be 40%. Um, maybe a net gain, but also a lot of legwork. Probably not worth doing. Whereas if I just do four level one ones, then mm. that's 12% productivity. And that's, that's still pretty good. That's something. Just making them by hand. They only take red and green um, chips, so that's not bad. The Red Green Show? Yeah. Uh, that probably didn't air outside Canada, did it? Probably that not. That was a fantastic show. All right, there we go. We have all the productivity modules in there. So this hmm. thing is, it's got 16% productivity bonus. It crafts slower, speeding. but the crafting speed is not a problem. And it uses a shitload of electricity. Uh, 10 megawatts. Oh. Whoa. Ten mega danks. Yeah. That's uh, a lot of dank. <laughs> I'm going to make some beacons. Oh, no, you can't put productivity in a beacon, can you? No, you can't. You're gonna, okay. You're going to make some bacon? What are they attacking? Oh, shit. Uh, that oh. needs you, copper mine. Yeah, it oh. needs you. A lot of things out of ammo, and there's a bit of a crisis. You go I deal with that. Just... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this rocket silo working better. So what's slowing this down down here? Horrifically bad construction speed. Got it. <laughs> okay. Just put down more turrets down there. That's what this calls for. I think they're breaking the repair bots too. Okay. They're riding the conveyor belts, just having a good old time down here. All right, I'm speeding that up massively. God, this sucks. Um, we have plenty of fuel and all that. Actually, we we're not bringing any fuel into this chest. Did we run out of solid fuel production? You know what it, what it probably is. Yeah, yeah, we don't have enough heavy oil. Oh, no, that isn't it. We're still making it. Where's the chest for this? Isn't it down here somewhere? No, it is not. No. Maybe I, I just manually down. put it there. I don't think I have that as part of the logistics network. Okay, I'll what? go hook that up. Put even more turrets down there. Good. That should do it. You know, one thing I heard about that uh, shitty prequel or whatever of the thing that was also called The Thing. Yeah, it's awful. Uh, I heard that they had made, like, a lot of really impressive practical effects for it. Yeah. And, like, a producer stopped in and was just like, Ew, no, make it all CGI. Yeah, the hilarious thing is they said it didn't look clean enough. The whole point Ugh. of the original thing is it looked fucking disgusting and gritty and real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does, shouldn't look like clean CGI. The thing, the actual no. creature wasn't like a clean masterpiece you know no it didn't no. and a, a real visceral feeling you got of the the monster and the thing is that it never reached its like end state you know like there was it never stopped mm. transforming into something new there was no end state that it ever reached you don't know what the yeah. actual if if the thing has a final form you never saw it yeah and i kind of like that i think in the 2011 movie, like when they when it breaks out of the chunk of ice, it's like this weird insect thing that kind of looks like one of the bugs from Starship Troopers. I never watched Starship Troopers. Uh, that's a shame. I've heard it's good. I don't really know anything about it, though. Yeah. Um, a really interesting thing about that one is it's like a 
think that came out in like the mid to late 90s and like the effects aged so well in it really like, it still it still looks really good was it just largely practical effects or what not really there was a lot of like cgi bugs in it and somehow they still look like really good oh, that's impressive i mean there were a lot of practical effects too but that's just something that always surprises me when i rewatch it is how like how good it still looks I'm like, making a few efficiency modules and putting them in this beacon, by the way, so all the machines in this range use up less electricity. I'm mostly doing it to help handle the rocket silo being a power hog. Mm-hmm. There we go. So, 5%. I'm reducing everything in this range by 30%. I mean, the rocket silo is still above my huge amount because of the production things, but it's shaving a bit off. We shaved off about a megawatt. Okay. I just want to make sure it doesn't immediately blow through a bunch of our accumulator charge when it starts to produce something during the night. Oh, yeah. This also massively cut down on the assembling machines, making both the uh, the low-density material as well as the fuel. How many rocket parts do we need? Grand total, a thousand of each thing. Uh, to make and that'll make a hundred rocket parts, which is what you need to do it. You see how it's at five percent? That's five rocket yeah. parts. Each rocket part uh, needs okay. ten of each ingredient. The only thing slowing us mm. down are, as you could probably imagine, rocket control unit. Yep. Which is very slow to make, as you can see. I have a lot of speed modules yeah, yeah. in there trying to speed it up. In fact, I think yeah. I'm gonna make a bunch of beacons just to try and speed that up more. Yeah, I'm going to work on that right now. I'm making a bunch of beacons. Oh, this will take a while. I think I'll go build some walls around that new coal mine. Go for it. Because I never did. I don't think it'll be that urgent, but... It would make me feel better. All right, I'm going to keep making these beacons. All right, I've got this assembly machine running at 120% uh, crafting speed using 300% electricity. Okay. It's uh, It's impressive. Let's speed it up more. I think I can fit one more beacon on this thing. Maybe two more beacons on this thing before I can start rounding around this way. I'm just trying to speed up this one machine as much as possible. I could make multiple machines doing this, but fuck yeah. that. <laughs> I want to speed up the fuck out of one of them because it's funny to me. <laughs> How's our red science pack? Is that bad right now? It's it's pretty good, actually. Okay. Just oh. making sure. Did we just add a logistics robots? No, we have shitloads. I don't know why I'm being delivered this so slowly. <laughs> like, really slowly. Yeah, I'm part of the logistics network, huh? Weird. Mm. Yeah, I don't know why I'm being delivered that so incredibly slowly. Maybe they're all too busy carrying bricks to me. Maybe. I'm getting bricks. What for? Roads? No, nah, for walls, mostly. Ah. That's what I usually use them for. Yeah, and we got concrete now for roads. In fact, I'm going to put down some more roads right now. Hmm. Jesus, the noise of that. Mm -hmm. Putting down concrete sounds crazy. Really? Yeah. Okay, what I'm speeds is this here. working at now? 400% energy consumption. 160% crafting speed. It is going yeah. nuts. <laughs> Where is this concrete you speak of? Let me see. This. Uh, start requesting it. I request a thousand at a time. All right. How do you make this 
square bigger? Uh, plus and minus on your numpad. Uh, it has to be the numpad. Yep. Yeah. Right. That was a pretty fun noise. It is, isn't it? You just kind of start doing it on the ground and then just start running. Wait until you got like a thousand of it and then just put out your feet and start running in a direction. <laughs> it's a fun way to run away from monsters. Build a road as you go. <laughs> Although they'll start using the road if they're smart. Yeah. Which they're not always smart. Oh, so the road speeds monsters up also? Yes. That sucks. Yeah. How's electricity looking? Pretty good, actually. How's the progress on the accumulators? Still making shitloads of them. Got it. Where are we making those accumulators? Right here. It's building them pretty slow. Hmm. I think it's getting... I think it's not getting enough batteries. Hmm. That's probably the issue. I think our battery production's always been slow. Yeah, it's just a slow machine. So you said you were gonna upload some more of this on Tuesday. Does that mean this session? Uh, yeah, probably. I was gonna cut the oh, session what? in half. Yeah, All I'm right, literally what I'm doing is every time we get a recording now to get it up faster. Uh, mm -hmm. I just every time we do a session, I just look at whatever the time length of it is, cut it in half. That's our two episodes for the week. They Dang. are like last week's. Two one hour and a half episodes. Wow. Yep. That's Was that's that, how we're getting it out faster. Now, how did you edit around the five minute break we took? Uh, the second episode ends with the five minute break. And then oh, okay. the five minutes takes until next Tuesday. And that's our <laughs> next recording session. I mean, five minute break. I mean, it took five minutes. Yeah, yeah. It took until five minutes later. Yeah. Would I lie to you? I watched you streaming the other day, and you said you were about to take a five-minute break, and I was like, wait a minute. I know what this means. You know my secret code. Apparently I wasn't requesting advanced circuits. I could have sworn I was. Huh. Well, I'm fixing that now. I was wondering why they weren't delivering it to me. That was weird. I could have <laughs> sworn I was requesting that. Arresting? Uh, requesting. I am just illiterate. Okay, um... That was 7% of the way there. What do I need to do now? I need... Uh... Speed modules, yeah. I'll just grab those ones. I need to go speed up battery production. It's slowing some shit down. Hmm. And I'll just make one more by hand. I've got the resources on me. Okay, that'll help our battery problems. We just weren't making batteries very quick. We have all the resources easily. I'm watching the rocket build. It looks pretty cool when it launches. <laughs> we almost got a free rocket part. Yay! Almost 20% of uh, production bonus. That's really good. <laughs> What do we have, 16%? So we get 16 free rocket parts over the course of the whole thing. That saves us 160 uh, pieces of whatever we need. We actually All have right. too many rocket control units in there now. Yeah, we, now our problem is not enough low density structure. Well, I will have to start speeding that one up too. Whenever one gets delivered over here, I will just steal it. There we go. There we go. That is full speed, and I will get some beacons on that at some point. Hmm. I think I hear a dog barking outside my window. Do you have a dog that wants to be let in? It's not my dog. Oh. I don't know whose dog it is. Sounds like a little yappy dog. Yorkshire Terrier. Were you there during RimWorld when we had a pack of 25 man hunting, a manhunter pack of 25 Yorkshire Terriers? No, I think I saw the aftermath of that when a bunch of people were wearing Yorkshire Terrier clothing. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot. 
So we killed them. <laughs> and uh, then we ate them, and we made them into clothing. A lot of Yorkshire Terrier clothing. Yorkshire Terrier leather was the fashion for quite a while. We had a lot of parkas made out of them. Very stylish. Right, I'm gonna just hand make some speed modules. Because uh, we're not getting enough over there. Because oh, we're building so fucking fast. Do they have to be threes or just regulars? Uh, just regulars, thankfully. Because threes take up just lots of resources. I can't believe low density structure is the thing we're running low on now. At least it's not fuel. Oh no, actually fuel is uh is gonna start running out. Yeah. Okay, we'll have to speed that up as well. I'm just pouring speed modules into these beacons. I'm just rolling around at the, at the speed, speed of, of sound. sound. Got places to go, gotta follow your rainbow. Alright, 9% done. This is the really eventful last part of the game. Can't you tell how eventful it is? Oh yeah. Oh, There's the next so match events. we get a free part! Oh boy. That's when our discount kicks in. <laughs> so many events. So are we running into any like resource shortage crises around here? It's not looking like it. I'm just looking around and making sure there's nothing I should be running around and fixing. We're looking yeah. really good on green uh green yeah, circuits. We are. Probably because we haven't researched in so long that we just have massive stockpiles of resources. Mm -hmm. And so all the excess is going over to this stuff, which is what we really wanted at. <laughs> well, I am not complaining about that. Oh, we kind of have a shortage of rocket parts. We need to... Well, yeah, yeah, it's kind of what we're working on. <laughs> we don't have enough of those right now. I think we should work on making some of those. Yeah, I wonder where we're going to get those. Okay, let me start putting these beacons in places where it hits all of these. God. There we go. Jesus Christ, will you look at the speed of that one on the right? 1.1 megawatts. <laughs> uh, it stopped. Yeah, it's because it's not getting into speed modules fast enough now. Oh. Can't produce them fast enough. I don't have enough red uh, circuits going up there. What is this storage chest with four blueprints in it? Oh, that's a, um, it's a logistics network storage chest, so when I dump stuff, sometimes it'll put it in there. <laughs> it's just, you know, you want to dot the map with storage chests so they always have a close-by place to drop things off if they need to. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Take both of those, put them in here. That affects more oh. of them. We're 11% done now. Welcome back to the uh, Factorio podcast. Sponsored by Mountain Dew, power to the player. Today we're talking about Sonic Underground again. <laughs> when do <laughs> Welcome back to the Sonic Underground and uh, Factorio podcast. Welcome back to part 11 of our Sonic Underground expose. Welcome back to the official, the only official uh, podcast for um, Factorio. So Truth, what do you think about Sonic Underground? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite was the green one. For a second, I didn't know you were talking about the hedgehog, and I was like, "Your your favorite episode is the green one." What the <laughs> fuck are you saying? <laughs> I like the green episode. <laughs> What's it to you? You've been you've been hitting that devil's lettuce too much. Devil's lettuce. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, they just as soon as they legalized it, I swear. Yeah. Like Some of person. that devil's weed. <laughs> Some of that smoke leaf. <laughs> smoke leaf. That's what it's called in uh, RimWorld. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it's so good. Not not the weed. I mean the jokes <laughs> about the weed. Oh god! Oh god! What? Whoa! Hello. Uh, you want to put a turret right here? Apparently they finally caught on to this whole thing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, maybe like some up here too. Let's just be really fucking safe with this. We do not want the rocket silo getting destroyed. Oh god. Please no. be paranoid levels of defenses around this. Would we like lose all of that progress? That it's I made suspect we would. I've never had it die, but I genuinely really think we would. Would all 12% of that be gone? Probably. Oh no. That's terrifying, isn't it? Yeah, that is not happening, mister. That is no good. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's your body. No one has the right to touch you if you don't want them to. So what do you do? First, you say no. Is then, that episode you get out of there. the most YouTube pooped video on the internet? Probably. It's gotta be. Oh, man. It's pretty much the tutorial for YouTube pooping. Just change what he says to be about touching kids. <laughs> Sounds well, awful, already... but that's like the tutorial for making a YouTube poop. But, but it's already about touching kids. Well, making it about how it's a good idea. Oh, uh, okay. So you just remove where he says no in that's no good. Yeah, that's good. And you like switch, <laughs> switch a few sentences around. Congratulations, you made a YouTube poop. Yeah, you made a really lazy one. The worst YouTube poops. Bad YouTube poops are the worst thing in the world. Great YouTube poops are art. Mm. Yeah. Bad YouTube poops are just, look, I can repeat two frames over and over, uh, never ending with no, like, mm. no comedic timing whatsoever. And, oh, whoa. Here's a really loud noise out of nowhere. I fucking hate those ones. I do not get the fascination with sudden, like, eardrum bursting noise. That's not funny to me. And oh, I man. see the comments from people saying, like, every time I hear a loud noise, I laugh. I'm like, what the? <laughs> is this some kind of fucking, like, just innate human thing where some people think loud equals instantly funny? I think loud with comedic timing can be funny, but not that, mm. not like eardrum bursting. I wear a fucking yeah. headset. It has to have a limit. Yeah, like, I don't do that. I hate that shit. It, it literally gives me migraines. I, I get headaches like that, and I can get migraines, too. I don't get them quite like I used to, but loud noises still trigger that, so, you know, that sucks. Yeah. I yeah, just get annoyed. 13%. What are we lacking? We are lacking speed modules. Kind of figured. Mm. All right, I'm going to make a bunch by hand just to make them faster. I've already made as many as I can. Hmm. We need more red speed module, or more red oh, um, circuits up there. I found our lamp. <laughs> yep. The Good old lamp. lamp. Good old lamp. It's using up five kilowatts. <laughs> Five kilowatts. Yep. Oh, hey, it uh, looks like uh, production is going to speed up a lot. We actually have a massive backlog of processing units. So it looks like uh, it looks like a lot of that is going to go to speed modules now. Which is good, because that's what we really, really need a lot of. Yeah. It's the biggest 13%. thing slowing us down. 13%. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, what horror movies are you watching for Halloween? Uh, none. Oh. I haven't watched... I have not sat down and watched a movie in probably, like, five years. Oh. Yep. Man, just, and that was I, I used to be a movie buff in high school. And the last one you watched was the Thing prequel. And that caused you to stop watching movies forever. Probably. Oh, no. Oh, uh, no, I, I rewatched. um... I rewatched uh, Friday Thirteenth, the first one, okay. um, but that was just uh, watching it with uh, Far From Subtle. Video game was awesome. Their commentary over it because that was really funny. Hmm. Um, they did the third movie too, I think. I gotta watch that one. Um, <laughs> oh, you know, no, I I rewatched um, I rewatched Wet Hot American Summer. Uh, a couple a years movie. ago to to watch it with uh 
Because Fatima had never seen it and she loved it. For anyone who doesn't know, Wet Hot American Summer is the funniest movie I've ever seen in my life. That's not a horror it's, movie. It's great. It's a movie that sounds like it's supposed to be a dumb boner comedy. And it is <laughs> not. It is just fucking hilarious. I think you told me this last time. Yeah, you need to watch that one. It is the funniest movie I've seen in my life. Well, if there is a movie that'll get you to start watching movies again, it needs to be Kung Pao. Yeah, I, I do need to watch Kung Pao. I Because I know 100% I'm going to really like Kung Pao. Like, I, oh, it's yeah. not even a thing of I don't think I'll like it. I know I'm going to like it. Mm -hmm. I know you are, too. Yeah, and we did have a few comments on the Factorio videos just saying, like, hey, great episode. Also, watch Kung Pao. Yes. Like, every, everybody who watched Kung Pao is now just telling me, watch Kung Pao. Truth is right. Watch Kung Pao. Yeah. I've only <sighs> ever known, like, one person to not like that movie. It's the weirdest thing. No, I guess, I think two people. What do they not like about it? I don't know. Like, I let one of my coworkers borrow it from me recently, and he said he, like... He only got like 10 minutes into it and he was like, okay, I, I can see what this is. This movie's going to be. And I'm like, it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. It's weird. Man, but, I mean, how I could you only get 10 minutes into a movie and then judge it based on that? It would have to be a phenomenally shift movie for me to give up 10 minutes in. I don't I think know. I've ever given up 10 minutes into a movie. Mm -hmm. The only thing... And, like, I've seen some fucking garbage, too. <laughs> like, yeah. I, it's, that's not a thing of, oh, I haven't seen bad movies now. No, I've seen bad movies. Like, I watched all of Manos, Hands of Fate and stuff. Like, I watched some truly horrendous movies. I, uh, we, like, we used to, like, stay up all night in high school sometimes, and we just, like, binge watch terrible movies. I watched... Uh, what was it? Uh, Dolomite and Cannibal Holocaust back to back. And my God, the tonal Ooh. shift in that. Wow. Uh, we decided to have exploitation night. So we watch all different kinds of exploitation films. So there is a, uh, for traditional exploitation, it's Cannibal Holocaust. Black exploitation, we did Dolomite. Then there was, uh, what was it? Like Hong Kong exploitation, we did. Um, I forget the name of it, but it was a Predator ripoff. And we didn't fucking plan this, but every single movie ended up having a guy who gets his dick cut off. <laughs> we watched like five movies. Did you watch any uh, sexploitation? Maybe. I don't remember. We never watched any straight up porn on any of them. Although we did watch. Oh God, uh, we, we, we did watch. Um, not on that night, but we watched. Uh. Oh, why am I blanking on the name? It's a really good movie, Boogie Nights. That was a good movie. Oh, and that I mean, that is it. a that is a movie that has porn in it. Like it, not literal porn. There's no you never seen any penetration. Yeah. It's it's a, about a character who is a porn actor. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a good movie. People tell me I look like Han Solo. Oh my God, <laughs> chest Rockwell. Oh God, I love that movie. Um, the only thing with Kung Pao, I would say, the only thing you kind of have to look past is there is some CGI in it that is pretty dated now. It's like that's least... fine. It's a comedy. I don't care. Yeah, those are like the least funny parts of the movie. I think is when they're using the CGI, but like the kind of like green screen effects and stuff that they used to actually like insert the guy into the movie still looks like amazing. Oh yeah. From every little, like, Twitter, or Twitter, every little YouTube clip I've seen, and I've seen quite a few, mm. it is incredible. Like, I did oh, yeah. not know the movie was not just a comedy made with him in it until you told me that on this show. Because really? I had seen clips of that movie, like, off and on for years, and just, I didn't know the mm. name of it. I never had any idea that it was not just a movie made with this guy in it. I didn't oh, yeah. know. You don't mm. notice until you look for it. It's that mm -hmm. good. And, like, he's in fucking fight scenes where you see the people and him and shit. Like, mm. it's like, I yeah. would have no idea, like, to think yeah. that the that this guy had this fucking good of green screen editing and everything. Like, that's, yeah. it is something to behold. I am jealous yeah. of that guy's editing. Yeah, I mean, now some of it, like, not all of it was, like, green screen. Some of it was, like, reshooting with kind of, like you know, body double actors. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they did stuff like that. It couldn't entirely be a guy in his studio. Mm -hmm. right. You know, just like 
throw similar clothing on a guy that he's fighting and just never have his face towards the camera and you're good. Be yeah. in a, a s astonishingly similar looking area. It wouldn't surprise me if he literally went to the same place they shot play things. Like, he, mm. he just did, like, you know, scene hunting and found the actual location and was just there. Because right. the... How close some of the sets look is, again, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. I'm trying so hard to keep these fucking rocket control units going. I swear to God. <laughs> I love this wall of beacons. I love this wall of beacons. <laughs> so what do we need? We need a thousand processing units and speed modules total for this thing. Am I at a point where I can safely just turn off production of processing units? I might be able Whoa. to. I'm going to at least for a little while. Whoa. I'm just going to take away their inserters. Hmm. There. Now how much How much of the Friday the 13th series have you watched? I probably saw like the first five but it would have been like mid to early high school. So I barely remember most of them. Although I do like that series. And in fact, have you ever played the Friday 13th video game? The recent one? Yes. No. Nah, it is one of the funnest video games I have ever played. Hmm. It is probably the one of the best multiplayer experiences I've ever had. A lot of people shat on it early on, but my God, did it get good. Unfortunately, it's actually in production limbo. It may never be updated again outside of bug fixes uh. because, um, and it's not actually the dev team's fault or the producer's fault. It's completely out of their hands. Uh, somebody is claiming to own uh, the Friday 13th license and to have owned it for all these years. And Whoa. so now it's in legal limbo while the court case is going on. And uh -huh. while it's in legal limbo, nothing with it can be produced, which means the hands of the game studio are tied. They can't update it until they figure out who owns it because they might not have a... Because if it turns out that the studio that gave them the license to make the game doesn't actually own it, then they don't have a legitimate right to be producing the game without permission from the actual owner. And fiscally, it doesn't make sense to continue to update this game knowing it might explode one day. So basically, yeah. the it... They got a lot done in it, and I consider it a complete game, but development has ceased outside of bug fixes. And huh. fans are hoping that one day they'll continue to add new content, but who knows. Um, huh. It's a really great game, though. I used to stream it, like, multiple times a week for, like, three months. I want to get back to streaming it someday. I just... All I do is I just go in and just first come, first serve. Fans join in. We, we, like, swap people out if more people in the chat want to play, like, every three rounds or so. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's a counselor, except for one guy who's uh, Jason. Jason wants to kill as many pe people as possible. The counselors want to escape, and it's just really fucking fun. Uh, it's got all the music and everything. It has, like, this, <laughs> it has the stinks from the movie when Jason appears, and your oh. movies are all based around Hollywood magic, so um, you could use, uh, I think it's called um, Stock which is mm -hmm. you make it so your music, the Jason music that plays when Jason is on scene, mm -hmm. doesn't play. So you turn oh. off the music so you can sneak up on them. <laughs> and uh, you can shift. You know how like Jason would just kind of appear in places? Shift mm -hmm. is you go into Jason vision. You go into his first person view as he's moving really fast, like in those fast forward shots where the camera's like coming towards a counselor. And yeah. it cuts, and you know, they try to have the reaction shot and they would cut there. You go into that vision, so you move super fast but with bad control. And you can basically like, shift forward temporarily to try and grab somebody who's unsuspecting. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, okay. you can also use uh, Morph, which is you, tele you pick a place on the map and you teleport there. And different, you can pick different Jasons from different movies, and they have different strengths and weaknesses, like how often they can morph and shift and stuff. And when oh, you morph on someone to cover that you've just teleported in front of them, if you teleport near someone, there's a VHS scratch, and then the music cuts in. <laughs> and it's really great! Like, it's really cool. So when the VHS scratch happens, you know Jason just teleported nearby, and they're covering a oh. teleport. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so fucking cool. And you have, like, custom kills based around the environment, and you can, like, unlock different kills. Like, it's one where you choke slam a dude and you stomp their head. There's, like, famous movie kills, like shoving guy's head on a pike. Mm -hmm. um, the sleeping, it, bag one. sleeping bag, yeah. If somebody is hiding in a sleeping bag and you catch them, you can bash it off the tree. Um, of course. 
kicking people into campfires, skewering people, scoop slam a dude onto his head to break his neck. There's a few wrestling moves, actually. You can throw a haymaker so badass it knocks a dude's head off as a projectile. <laughs> it's really, really fun. And um, there's like, you know, there's a different few different ways out of the place and you can level up your counselors and get different abilities uh, that they can bring in with them. One of the coolest things, though, is uh, there's a phone on every stage. There's there's two phones. There's the ham radio and then there's the phone. If you find the ham radio and you successfully radio, you send it a distress signal and the second player who dies comes back to life as Tommy Jarvis for the movies. <laughs> and you get Tommy Tommy Jarvis shows up with a shotgun with one bullet or one shell, which will stun Jason. He usually starts with a radio, so if any other player has a radio, he can he can talk to them from across the whole map. He doesn't need to be near them. So and he starts with a map. And he starts with one minute of knowledge of where Jason is, so he can try and coordinate with the survivors. And his incentive is Tommy Jarvis doesn't necessarily need to survive. There's bonus points for that. His main goal is to go out swinging, trying to save other counselors. <laughs> and it's awesome because you get like a bonus for saving other counselors with them. And that experience goes into leveling up to unlock new Jasons and and get new abilities and stuff. It's really fun. It's such a fun game. Tommy Jarvis. Yeah. That loser from the movies. <laughs> No, was not his voice him to be like actor that. they actually got one of his original voice actors back he's the <laughs> worst voice actor in the game by far it is incredible like if you call the place with Tommy Jarvis it, it's so fucking bad help you gotta help J Jason's coming and he's gonna kill all of us you gotta help we're at Camp Crystal Lake <laughs> there's a lot of stages too and they're all modeled after the movies really mm -hmm. faithfully like all the like lodges from the movies are in there the Jarvis house is there like it's great uh tell me there's a Jason X level I don't there were plans to make one but I think that's been shelved I do believe Jason uh, X Jason is in the game though okay <laughs> there were even toying with the idea of getting Freddy in the game at some point but uh <laughs> eventually uh their main competition is Dead by Daylight who scooped him up uh, yeah, Dead by Daylight uh, developer has got Jason and Michael Myers. Uh, Dead by Daylight is cool. I've never been super into it, mostly because the the killer for me on that is um, it's a really cool idea. I don't like that there's no voice communication at all. One of the uh, funnest parts about Friday 13th for me is you can hear people near you and trying to panic and communicate with them. And as Jason <laughs> sneaking up and hearing what they're saying, you know? Or even trying to throw Jason off, like saying things that are false because you know Jason's nearby and you're pretending you haven't noticed him yet. Yeah. So giving Jason false information, you know, that's mm. really useful, too. Oh, it's so good. It is just such a fucking good game. Hmm. Well, uh, yep. we're at 22 percent here and uh, yep. Fatima is actually going to be home very soon. So I need to take a five minute break. A five minute break. So. Here's what I think we'll do. Mm -hmm. All that is needed to beat the game now, genuinely, yeah. is to stand here and wait. So okay. what I'm going to do, off screen, I'm just going to leave the game running a bunch in single player to get our save file up to 100% of that. We'll come back one day when we have a little bit of time. We will, uh, you know, later this week, we'll have a chance to record, in fact. Yeah, Literally probably. just... I'll, I'll just uh, make sure that on the Tuesday episode will be this episode. This will be the finale. I'll mm -hmm. splice in us sitting back down together to watch the rocket blast off. Right, so we're not going to sit here for hours while I talk about every movie in the Friday the 13th franchise? No, but what if about? you ever pick up the Friday 13th game on sale, let me know you're joining in on a stream on that sometime because it's damn good. How about the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise? Because I watched I... all of those too. Now, which one was the Dream Warriors one? Fifth one? Three, I think. Three? Really? Was it that early? I think so. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's the last one I watched, I think. I watched the first through that because I was on a horror movie kick in high school. And that's when I started watching the big famous ones, you know. Halloween, Friday 13th, yeah. um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, and I think there was another one I watched a little of, but I'm not remembering yeah. it on my head. Those were the big three. But I have only watched... Halloween 1. Never got into that series. Halloween 2 was solid. Uh, Halloween 3 I wasn't that into. 
And every, okay, I'd say Halloween three onwards is all bad, and the Rob Zombie remake is one of the worst horror movies I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Halloween one and two are really good movies. Mm-hmm. Stop there. Just watch those two. Okay. Halloween two takes place like I think ten minutes after Halloween one. Okay. It's the same I, night. I don't know why Rob Zombie has such a following. Like I have never enjoyed one of his movies. He's got good music. That's it. I guess that's it. Is that's he's a musician first and foremost, and is he's got some pretty good songs. He did a song for Edge, the pro wrestler, once, and it was quite good. I mean, I don't think yeah. he did the song for him. He licensed the use of the song. Hmm. I don't think Rob that's... Zombie is exactly Lemmy of Motorhead, where Motorhead, specifically Lemmy, huge fan of WWE. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's splicey splicey and uh, show the ending. Back from five minute break, uh, we're ready to launch the rocket. All I did off screen, oh, wow. off screen during those five minutes that took three mm-hmm. hours. What the fuck is? What? Sorry, I'm just looking at the map again. The, the one spitter is still there, and then there was another attack. Um, th- there's a spitter who's just been attacking this one turret for, I don't know, a couple days five in minutes. game. Yeah, five minutes. Um, five minutes. So pretty much all I did was run the clock, and I also, uh, all of our pump jacks, I, we actually started to have a little bit of an oil problem, so I just put, um, two speed modules on each one. Apparently my intel on that just went bad. That was weird. Uh, I was zoomed in on, on the map, and then it suddenly went all weird. Um, oil so I did that, and I set up, like, two more oil refineries, because we just weren't making fuel fast enough. But uh, I got it all made. He's got the satellite and everything, so. Oh, dang. Do you want... What the fuck is getting destroyed? <laughs> is it a turret? Oh. Uh, it's robots. Oh, well, they can just die then. Would you like okay. to do the, the honors of hitting the launch button? I already oh, put the satellite in. Am I qualified? I probably not, but you should do it. I'm going to press the button. All right, press the button button pressed Ooh, oh. it's got a better animation than it used to Ooh. oh that actually oh, looks really man. nice whoa there it goes it's gone yeah hey this is game finished all right did you get the achievement i got smoke me a kipper i'll be back for breakfast and i got rain of bullets all right, rain right. now. Rain of bullets is uh, not using right. laser turrets, right? Yeah. Okay. I think so. And the Kipper one—that's just for launching the rocket with the satellite. Yep. Okay. Time played twenty-four hours and five minutes. Yeah. Now what I'm gonna do real quick, and we'll just time skip forward a little bit. We're gonna reload this save. And do the fish. And we're gonna do the fish. All right. Uh, I don't have a fish on me, so I'm gonna have the request to request me a fish. Oh, you know I've got a fish. <laughs> do you have a fish on you? Okay, you can you can do the honors. Take out the satellite, put the fish in whenever you've loaded in. All right. All right, do it. Oh. You just click on it, and you take the satellite out of the rocket inventory, and you put in a fish. All right. You actually saved at a point when I did not yet have a fish, but I got one. Okay, good. All right, put that fish in there. I think the fish doesn't get you any research. But that's fine. Five fish, you monster. That or you're sending him <laughs> up with friends. That's fine. I mean, that's just how good I am at fishing that I caught five at once. Yeah. All right. Launch that fish. Go get him. And uh, this is a secret achievement. It's one of the ones where it doesn't tell you how to do it. Oh. Yeah. I think it's the only one that does that in this game. Is there anything else we can launch? I don't think so. I haven't really experimented with it. There you go. You launched the so rocket, long. but there was no satellite inside. <laughs> there you go. Did Amazing. you get the achievement for that? I sure did. Sweet. Well, everybody, uh, that is a complete walkthrough of beginning to end how to get the victory condition of Factorio. There's still more in the game. Yeah. I can still get more like efficiency upgrades and stuff through some of this research. Artillery mm. shooting speed, for instance, takes space science packs. Which Ooh. require launching launching rockets. Oh but, my god! You know that's more for fun after game stuff than anything. There's it's not like 
we could get spaceships that we could fly in. Like there's there's no progress past what we've seen beyond mm. making things even more efficient. And making more weapons. Yeah, and just kind of like setting your own goals if you wanted to have a goal to, I don't know, you, you want to reach shooting a hundred rockets a minute. Then, you know, you could set that goal for yourself and you can achieve that. Um, it does sound fun. I, I feel like it would be tedium by a certain point. But uh, that is uh, that is beginning to end on Factorio. It's definitely... I'm not a pro at the game, obviously. I think you can tell. Uh, there oh, are people with much better designs than me. But this is how everything functions. Uh, so there you go. That, that was the walkthrough. Uh, I'm sure Truth and I will be back with something at some point. I don't know what the next thing we're going to do together is. Maybe your idea mm. of us both using playing a game at the same time with like one person on mouse and one on controller or keyboard or something like that yeah i've or, been thinking about that Drift i don't know compatibility gaming yeah that or like we'll play like quest for glory one or something because <laughs> that or we'll just like start a sonic underground review podcast oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my I god mean, we already made that it's called a factorio tutorial we'll just start a podcast where we review really shitty like canada only soap operas i'll like <laughs> no, i'll take we'll... like teen dramas i'll i'll find oh fucking dark oracle there you go that's that's probably the most canadian teen drama ever dark <laughs> oracle i'm sure you've never heard of it i really mm -hmm. doubt it aired outside of canada probably not all right everybody go uh, google we'll... dark oracle tv we'll... show We'll do that Sonic Underground uh, watch through, but we'll just talk about Factorio the whole time. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it the opposite. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, that'd be incredible. That'll be like release like videos. And it's like, this is our commentary track over this episode of Sonic Underground. So you sync it up. Three, two, one, go. And you're supposed to like play our commentary with an episode of that so that mm -hmm. our commentary will sync up. And we just <laughs> talk about Factorio. <laughs> Oh, I've got one more thing I'm going to do before we... Oh, end hold this. on. I, I got to follow you so I can watch this. Let me just... I mean, I could use the map, but you're probably going to walk out of the map range because you're mean. Oh, you're going to get the achievement for getting hit by the train. <laughs> you might want to take off your shields if you have them on. Uh-oh. I'll just take off all Now, there is an achievement for surviving a train hit or just surviving one... <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I was killed. Well, uh, yeah, I, I see your corpse here. I can loot your corpse if I wanted to. Truth, respond. You should come get your gear. Now oh. you want to put all your armor on, and there's an achievement for uh, surviving one really, really hard hit. A train is probably the best way to do that. Okay, how do so, I like, quick grab all of this stuff? I don't know. Okay, I'll grab it one by one. All right, I'm going to manually control the train. <laughs> that way, this thing doesn't slow on the turns. I'm just going to go max speed. So let me just... Oh, okay. I, I'm not going to go on it quite yet. Let me know when you have all your gear, and then I'm going to go all the way around the track at full speed. All right, you ready? Okay. Yeah, Hopefully you'll survive it. this. <laughs> you, you got your, like, your electric shield thing up? Because um, you'll I need it. I've got a shield capacity of 150. Let's hope that's enough. Well, nope. No. Nope. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, you'll probably need a few of them if you want to get that achievement. Uh, I can, I can give you mine. I'm I, I'm holding one. I don't fucking need it. Let okay. Just uh, over here again. <laughs> just run over me again. Yeah, apparently you're on top of the train, which is very strange. All right. Uh, oh, fuck off, dying things. There, I put it on the ground. It's absolutely minuscule when you put it on the ground. Huh. <laughs> Alright, I'm grabbing all this random crap I had accumulated. Alright, I'm also making five energy shields right now on the spot. Just because <laughs> it's, uh, it's something. It's, uh, it might be enough to push you over that limit of not dead. You just put this Plus over one here. one energy shield, mark two. Oh, okay. yeah, I only had one shield on. I don't need that roboport anymore, I don't think. Yeah. It's just putting a roboport over there to uh, 
Fuck's getting destroyed. It's just some turrets. Who cares? How many shields do you think I need? I don't know. Uh, so I'm making... Uh, fucking let me drop them. These right now. So you can have some more. Oh, small energy shields. Yeah, I mean, it's something. Oh, there's another one. Oh, I'm just waiting for the robots to deliver me the steel to make more of them. Then you can make another large one. I like how we're just elongating the final episode with this dumb <laughs> achievement. Hmm. I don't know if I have any more room for shields. Wow. We might actually need to research better armor to get this achievement. I feel like at that point we should just be getting the achievement off screen because no one wants to watch us do this stupid shit. Just run me over one more time and if I don't get it then it's fine. Alright, we'll, we'll give it a go in one second. I'm just I'm just looking at the research real quick. Uh, so just needs the efficiency ones. Okay. Alright, are you ready? Hold on. Wait, one more thing. Okay. Let me have a look at something. Okay, you do what you're doing. I'm building speed. <laughs> oh god. Hmm. Let's see. Are you just naming the track? Or yeah, the station? Somebody told, me, somebody told me to throw in one more anime reference. Alright. Alright, I'm at max speed. You just jump on that track whenever you feel like it. Is it good to be at max speed? Because the idea is for me to survive the hit this time. Yeah, but it needs to also be a high enough damage hit. Oh, uh, okay. It's probably full speed train. Oh, oh God. you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good every time. <laughs> there needs to be a sound. I hate that I just like it fall down. Uh, it needs to be a pottery break noise. <laughs> there does. There, I just played a pottery break. You just couldn't hear it. Okay. All right. I'm going to shoot these aliens dead. Okay. And then we're going to end the fucking episode. Okay. Fair. Oh, I don't even have my armor on. This is really dangerous. Yeah, I forgot about that. I gave <laughs> you all my shields. Yep. Well, I won. We have enough damage bu buffs. Boofs? Boofs? Yeah. Boofs. Thank you, everybody, That's for watching this series. Them. I hope that you enjoyed. Go check out Truth's channel. It's in the description. Uh, he does weird, stupid weeb shit sometimes. Yeah, mostly. Yep, yep. Weeb shit and Dwarf Fortress and Alona. It's really weird when you just list out the things you do. They're, it's an eclectic channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One day will... One, one mouse, one keyboard. Oh. One mouse, one keyboard, Ilona. Oh, so action-packed, that turn-based game. Until yeah. next time, have a nice day.